now that we've seen how important it is that we take a scientific poll, right? Quantity is not as important as quality. Nevertheless, quantity is a little bit important, right? We need to know how many people to get in order to get that precision and confidence that we were interested in, right? So do we need 50 people, 500 people? What are we interested in? And so we need some formulas to do that for us. And these are the first two ones we're going to learn. These are when you want to estimate a population proportion, like from a survey. What proportion of people are going to give away Halloween candy this year? What proportion of people believe in UFOs? That kind of thing. And you have two formulas, one where you have a prior estimate given to you. So you have some old data set or some old value, and then you can use that value p hat. And then you have ones where you don't have a prior estimate, and then you're stuck using this formula. And again, as with most cases, you don't need to memorize the formula because it's right, both of them are right here. And I even tell you what you need. So they must be rounded up and the margin of error must be a decimal. So when you're working with proportions, they've got to be decimal values for your error. Okay, so let me get back to the functions. There we are. All right, so now let's see our example. Suppose we want to know how many students we need to poll to find out whether statistics professors at J.C. Jackson College are awesome. Um, I just obviously made this up to serve myself. Okay, so how many people are we going to need to poll if we want? And then it depends on what we're looking for. So the first part, we want 95% confidence within a 3% margin of error. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of things to figure out. First of all, error. Error is 3%. But if you remember, according to that formula, it said it had to be a decimal. So you have to go and find the decimal, and it's 0 0.03. So there's our error. That's done. Then we need to know our alpha. But remember that your confidence level is right here, right? So since that's your confidence level, oop, and the mar margin of error, let me highlight that. So the margin of error gets us our 3% right here. And then our confidence level is is 95%. That means that our alpha is 0.05, because remember, they're complements of each other. And it's right in the formula, again, right here. See that? 1 minus alpha, right, times 100%. Oops, there should be 100% on that confidence. I think I didn't do it because I didn't want error to get popped down to the bottom. So there you go. So it's it's 1 minus alpha times 100%. There, I changed my font size and squeezed it in there. Okay, so let's see. I need the alpha to be 0.05. That means that my alpha over 2, because that's what I'm going to need for these formulas. To see the Z alpha over 2s in there? So I'm going to need alpha over 2. So that's going to be... Um, Let's see here. Alpha over 2 is 0 0.05 over 2, which is 0 0.025. And it just occurred to me I'm doing this all wrong. I'm going to reorganize this. So here's what we've been doing so far. So we got a 3% margin of error. We got our confidence level to be 95. That means alpha is 0 0.05, the whole complements thing. They're complements. And so then we take alpha over 2, which is 0 0.05, cut it in half, and that gets us our 0 0.025. So now we need to find the z-score for it because the formula is going to be, well, let's go back and figure it out. We have no prior estimate anywhere in here, no old results or anything. So we're going to be using the p hat 1 minus p hat 1, which is this one. So we need that z alpha over 2. Now, it's been a while since we've done z's, but you actually find them with inverse norm. So, because remember, z is the normal curve, right? So you go to second distribution, inverse norm, then you have 0 0.025, that's your alpha over 2, 0 and 1, paste, enter, and you get 1.96. Or remember, you can use the table up here, you can use the bottom row of the t-table. So let me move this up. So when you get to the bottom row of the t-table, do you see how it says z right there? So you say, OK, I want the 0 0.025 column, which is right here in the middle. And that means that I want 1.960. There it is, right there. So either from the t-table or from inverse norm, you need to have 
inverse norm 0 0.025 comma 0 comma 1 and you get 1.960. Technically it's the negative one but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Alright, that's the value we're going to plug in. So, oh I'm so sorry, we have no prior estimate. I'm being silly. We have no prior estimate. We can't use the p hat. We don't have a p hat to put in. I used the prior estimate one accidentally. Let me reiterate that. We had no prior estimate anywhere in here. There's no old survey to look at. So we can't use the prior estimate one. That means you have an old survey. We don't have that. We have to use this one. I'm sorry. So use the 0.25. Okay, so that would be 0.25, and then we said this was 1.96, we just found it, and this is 0.03. So we just need to find what that is. So let me grab a calculator. 0 0.25 parentheses, 1.960 divide by 0 0.03, close parentheses, square it, enter, and I get 1067.1 repeating. All right, now here's the thing. You can't pull 0.1111 of a person. That's impossible. Wrong one. So we need a way to round this. And according to the formula, we must round up no matter what. It's right here. They must be rounded up. You need that extra 0.1 of a person in order to get the confidence and the error you wanted, in order to get that precision you wanted. So you can't round it down, even though it's kind of low. So you have to round it up to 1068, and that's our result. And make a note to yourself that you have to round up. All right, now, here we have it. Suppose we did have last year's poll, and we found that 67% of students think that stats professors at Jackson College are awesome. Or awesome, depending on how you want to say it. All right, now, how many people, right now, how many people would you need to estimate or to question this year in order to be 95% confidence with a 3% margin of error? Well, all of this stuff is still the same. It's 95% confidence, 3% margin of error. None of it's changed. Right? You still have a z-score of 1.96. You still have an error of 0.03. But what is changing is the formula we're using. We now get to use the one I was trying to use before, which is the p-hat one. So we have p-hat times 1 minus p-hat over error squared, or times z over the error squared. Okay, well, the 1.96 and the 0.03 isn't changing. What is changing is p hat. You actually have a p hat estimate of 0.67 times 1 minus 0.67 right here. Now, where am I getting that from? Well, good question. So right here, it says 67%. That's your p hat value. Um, I'll label it red, right? So let me just put it right down here. P is 0.67 from a prior study, from prior survey, right? Some old data right there. So you're going to use that in the formula. So instead of 0.25, you're going to have to do 0.67, so 0.67, parentheses, 1 minus 0.67, close that parentheses because that's getting your multiplication. Then you still have to do 1.960 divided by 0 0.03, make sure to make it a decimal, and square it. Enter. And we get 943.753, and that would round up to 944. Now look what happened here. It's the same stuff, right? So we have n equals something times z alpha over 2 over error squared. And it was 1.96 for both of them because that came from our confidence level. It was 0.03 for both of them, right? There's our 3% margin of error, just like in the other one above. There's our 95% confidence, just like in the other one above. What color did I? Oh, I had these reversed. So at 95% confidence, 
was yellow in both of them. 3% margin of error was blue in both of them. It's the same for both of them. But having this prior estimate, having this red part right here, 0.67, that makes it so that we don't need as many. We don't need as large a sample as we do when we have no prior estimate. Because when you have no clue, it's like throwing darts in, in the dark. You have no idea where you're going to go. So you need a larger sample to get a hold of what's happening. But if you have some prior estimate, you can get away with a smaller sample because you at least have a clue it's on the left or the right of the board, if that makes sense. And that's what I just typed up here. So when you have a prior estimate of P available from an old study or survey, that means you don't need to pull as large a sample. And that's because you have some clue, you have, you have some clue um, from the old data where the p-value is here, I'll just say, where the p-value will be. It's nice to have a clue every once in a while.